How do you do? We never know the moments our lives will be forever changed. It occurs in the midst of common days, in the middle of a mundane week, interrupting our routine of life, demanding our attention. As with the reverend in our story, he wasn't expecting anything tremendous to impact his life this particular day, but he would encounter a depth of the supernatural that would blow his world wide open when his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Yes? Sir, this came for you. Thank you. The messenger is awaiting your response outside the gate. Now? Yes, sir. One moment. Excuse my liberty to write you, since we have never spoken. My, my dear, dear and, and only, only sister, sister, living as, as a servant, servant, took ill. I came and cared for her, but she is now no more. But what a happy time when Christ's kingdom shall come. Then shall his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Men shall be fed daily with the manna of his love and delight themselves in the Lord all day long. Reverend, my sister was convinced of the evil of her past life and that she had not walked in then ways of God nor sought to please him, but she earnestly desired to do so. It gives me hope that she has gone to glory and that she is joining in sweet concert with the angelic host singing the wonders of redeeming love. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. My sister wished that you might bury her, as the minister of our parish is unavailable. She will be buried on Friday or Saturday afternoon, whichever is most convenient for you. Please send answer by the bearer to whether you can comply with this request. Your, Your servant, servant, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Wilson. I'll take your reply, sir. That won't be necessary. I'd like to speak with a messenger. I'll invite him in, Reverend. I'd like to do so myself. This is Unshackled, the award-winning series of true life stories dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. The old hymn says, Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. The streets of every large city are filled with people who are lost and looking for answers. In Chicago, many of them come to Pacific Garden Mission, looking for food, warmth, and a place to sleep. They find it here. But what those men, women, and children receive is so much more. Because of friends who have partnered with us to reach these people, body, mind, and spirit, we have been able to rescue many of the perishing, care for the dying, and snatch them from sin and the grave. We've been able to provide counseling and classes to prepare them to return to a life more full than they could have imagined, which is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3840 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. Good morning. Oh, sir, I have brought you a letter from my daughter, but I fear you will think us very bold in asking you to take so much trouble. By no means. I shall be happy to oblige your family in this matter. Well, I'm sorry for your loss. Why don't we head inside? I must be getting back to the family. I understand. How far out of town do you live? We live in a little cottage six miles east. I have rented a few acres of ground and kept some cows, which, in addition to my day labor, has been the means of supporting my family. I see. Uh, what family have you? My wife, who's well along in years, as I am. Two sons and two daughters. Well, one, one dear child is, is, as you know, has, has just departed this wicked world. Was it consumption? It was, poor thing. I'm glad Elizabeth was there to minister to her. Oh, as am I. I believe Elizabeth's talking with her before she died was the means of what led her to the Lord. 
And now her soul is saved. A mighty blessing. Oh, what a mercy it is to have such a child. I never thought about my own soul seriously until she pleaded and prayed me to flee from the wrath to come. How old are you? Turn 70. My wife and I don't have many years of labor left, but this daughter of ours left a good position to come home and take care of us and our little dairy. What a dear and affectionate girl she is. Has she always been so? <laughs> no. No, she was all for this world and pleasures at one time. My children were willful, rebellious, given in to the sinful nature and, like ourselves, strangers to the ways of God and the word of his grace. What happened? The eldest, Elizabeth, she, she went to a service, and from that day on became a new creature. Took to reading the Bible and saving her money instead of spending it. And on her first visit home, brought us a guinea. That was kind. Oh, yes. We took great delight in her company. She's become so humble and kind. Seeming to do us good in both soul and body, that we began to think there must be something real in religion. Or it never could alter a person so much in a little time. It is the power of God's grace. That it is. And when her sister was taken ill, Elizabeth went to wait in her place and take care of her. Sharing of the Lord's great love for her, so that my sick one might cast herself upon Christ as her hope and salvation, which she did, just in time. I arrived at the church at the appointed time and was struck by the countenance of the young woman, Elizabeth, from whom I had received the letter. So much serenity mingled with a glow of devotion that radiated from her. I hadn't seen anything quite like it before, and haven't since. Seeing glimpses of the heart of the Lord, a reverend was compelled to share this testimony that's been treasured for generations. Based on his book, The Dairyman's Daughter by Lee Richmond, we bring you this true story of a life transformed, right now on Unshackled. Will you be staying with your parents the next couple of weeks? I'm actually going to remain with the family for which my sister worked until a new servant arrives. I see. That is quite generous of you. I would be truly obliged if we can talk more about my sister, either there or at my parents' house when I return home. I would like that. I shall call on you very soon. I shall be looking forward to it. That night, I reflected on the circumstances of the funeral. I blessed the God of the poor and prayed that the poor might become rich in faith and the rich may be made poor in spirit. I decided to wait a week to visit Elizabeth again even though it would be a long week. Uh, yes, you are the Reverend. I am. Good. Elizabeth's expecting you. Follow me. Certainly. You know, I've not seen a more devoted sister than Elizabeth. Is that so? Hmm. She cared for the needs of her sister day and night. Very generous. And attended to her sister's duties. I mean, we all tried to help, but Elizabeth really stepped in and had a way of taking care of everything. She is a blessing to many. It is more than that, sir. You can tell she really loves and cares about others. She's not out for herself, and there is not many people you come across like that. Reverend, you made it! It is nice to see you again, Elizabeth. I have been storing up questions and areas on which I could use your instruction. Elizabeth and I spoke about her sister and how there had been so many proofs of her change of heart before she died. Elizabeth's prayers for her family over the years had been so richly blessed but she did have a real concern eating at her. Sir, 
It is kind of you to leave the company of the rich to converse with the poor. I wish I could have shared more about my own state of mind. Perhaps I would be better able another time. I would like for us to meet again. You understand, though, the next time you visit, instead of finding me within this mansion's noble walls, you will find me in a poor cottage. Although, I am happiest there. You needn't worry. Are you sure? I am. Well, I do thank you for your past kindness to me and mine. And may God in many ways bless you for it. I left the house aware that God was already blessing me. Elizabeth had a cultivated mind and spirit like I had not seen. I climbed up to the summit of a nearby hill and looked out over a range of hills linked by valleys filled with cornfields and pastures. A small river winded through the vale and cattle dotted along it. To the other side of me, the open ocean stretched to the horizon. I took it all in, convinced of one thing, that much of the natural beauty of paradise still must remain in this world. Although its spiritual character has been so awfully defaced by sin, the next week I enjoyed my scenic travel to the dairyman's cottage, and even more so, the fellowship. We are not worthy that you should come under our roof. We take it very kindly that you have traveled so far to see us. My master came a great deal farther to visit us poor sinners. He left the bosom of his father, laid aside his glory, and came down to this world on a visit of mercy and love. And should not we go about doing the same good? We shall. Come in. Come in for some tea, Reverend. Thank you, ma'am. You see these books? They're about religion and hymns, so you might know some of them. I do. You have a nice little collection here. They're Elizabeth's. She reads them. Aha. Uh -huh. The Bible, of course. Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, Baxter's Saints Everlasting, a hymn book, and many others. She's our teacher of divine things. Is she now? I like to share what I learn. She's also a wonderful help in the garden and around the farm. Such a blessing, since it's harder for us to get round like we used to. We tremendously enjoyed our time together, as we did many other visits that followed. Clearly. Elizabeth's spiritual character was of no ordinary attainment. Her views of the divine plan of saving the sinner were clear and scriptural. Yet, it was on one of these visits one evening that I noticed a pale hue cast over her features, a presage of consumption, and the idea occurred to me that she would not live very long. Oh, what a surprise. Well, I wasn't expecting to see you. Sir, I brought a letter from my daughter. I hope I'm in time for the service. Of course, yes, yes. I was on my way to the church now. Oh, good. I hurried. But seven miles has become a long walk for me. I grow old and weak. But I'm very glad to see you, sir. I have been hoping to come visit. How is Elizabeth? Sir, um, very, very poor, sir. The doctor says it's a decline. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope she will get better, but then I have to face my fears. I've come to love and prize her so. It would be such a trial to lose her, but the Lord knows best. Ex excuse my weakness. It is not weakness, friend. You love your daughter. Oh, oh before I forget, <laughs> and she sends me back. This is her note. Thank you. I was happy for the dairyman to join in the services. My mind flooded with memories of reflection that fueled my emotions while preaching. The rich and the poor meet together in mutual acknowledgement that the Lord is maker of them all, that all are like dependent creatures looking up to one common Father to supply their wants, both in this world and spiritually. 
<clears throat> Again. Likewise. Will they meet together in the grave? That undistinguishable receptacle of the opulent and the needy. And once more, at the judgment seat of Christ, shall the rich and poor meet together, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. This house of prayer, the house appointed for all living, and the house eternal in the heavens, May we never separate these ideas from each other, but retain them in a sacred and profitable union. So shall our worshipping together on earth be like that which is in heaven. After the congregation dispersed and I bid the dairyman farewell, I slipped into my study to read Elizabeth's letter. Dear Sir, I should be grateful if your convenience will allow a visit to come, come and, and see, see a, a poor, poor, unworthy man. sinner. My hourglass is nearly run out, but I hope I can ask Christ to be precious to my soul. Our fellowship, our many conversations have been a blessing to me, and I feel the need for it now more than ever. From your obedient servant, Elizabeth Wilson. We'll continue with the true story of the dairyman's daughter in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our supporting ministry has an impact all over the world. Unshackled is spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we are able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there is one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the Donate button. Or you can always write a check to Unshackled and mail it to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. It's being observed that when it is the Lord's pleasure to remove a faithful follower out of this life at an early period of their course, that they make rapid progress in the experience of His divine truth. The fruits of the Spirit ripen fast as they advance to the close of mortal existence. In particular, they grow in humility and a clearer view of the perfect character of the Savior. Disease and bodily weakness make the thoughts of eternity recur with frequency and power. The great question of their own personal salvation, the quality of their faith, the sincerity of their love, and the purity of their hope are in continual exercise. As it was too with the dairyman's daughter. Oh boy, oh! Reverend, I cannot thank you enough for coming. My good friend, I came at once upon reading Elizabeth's letter. Oh, my dear girl, she is so bad, sir. What shall I do without her? I should have gone first to the grave, but... But the Lord sees good that before you die yourself, you should behold your child safe at home in glory. Is there no mercy in this? Yes. Praise God, yes. Come inside. She is desperate to see you. Elizabeth, I'm here. It's so kind that you came as soon as I sent for you. Of course. I'm wasting away and can't continue here long. <gasps> my flesh and heart fail, but God is the strength of my weak heart. And I trust will be my portion forever. <laughs> Yes, Elizabeth. Yes, he will be. I hope you enjoy a sense of the divine presence 
and can rest upon him who hath been with thee and has kept thee in all places whither thou hast gone and will bring thee into the land of pure delights where saints immortal reign sir i think i can my mind has been clouded but i think it is because of my body suffering and partly to the envy of my spiritual enemy who wants to persuade me that christ has no love for me and that i have been a self-deceiver and you give way to his suggestions can you doubt amidst such numerous tokens of so many past and present mercies no sir i mostly feel clear evidence of his love tell me again my friend how did you come to know him five years ago <laughs> i went to church in a new dress one that was far above my station as a servant girl and i wanted people to see me <laughs> and i think that's a common desire for many women during the sermon the preacher read a verse that said be ye clothed with humility from first peter tis a good verse he drew a comparison between the clothing of the body with that of the soul i began to feel ashamed of my fine dress i see you felt conviction it was more than that when he described the garment of salvation that a christian is to be clothed in I felt the nakedness of my own soul. I had neither the humility of dress he spoke of, or the garment of salvation. Hmm. Quite a predicament. He described the meek, lowly, and humble example of Christ. I felt proud, lofty, and vain in comparison. Christ was represented as wisdom, and I felt ignorant. Christ was sent forth as righteousness, and I was convinced of my own guilt. Christ was proved to be his sanctification, and I saw my corruption. He was proclaimed as redemption, and I felt my slavery to sin and captivity to Satan. The preacher said, flee from the wrath to come, and I wanted to. That's very powerful. From that hour, I never lost sight of the value of my soul and the danger of a sinful state. <laughs> that is wise, Elizabeth. That preacher brought forth the ruling passion of my heart, which was pride, and by the grace of God it was made instrumental to the awakening of my soul. And I understand now that the ornament of a meek and gentle spirit is of great worth in the sight of God. Elizabeth had lived so much in grace that it was no surprise she was dying with it. But her resolve was about to be tested in a way I did not see coming. There she is. There's my girl. Reverend. Sir. Father, our reverend friend blesses us with his presence. Yes, he is a true friend. Look how ill she looks. We shan't have her here long. Leave that to the Lord, Father. Oh, my dear. All our lives are in his hands. I am willing to go. Are you not willing to part with me? Ask me anything but that. Can you not release me into the hands that gave me to you? Oh, child. I know that you wish me to be happy. I do. I do. But let the Lord do as best pleases him. Yes, that's right, Father. Within a few days, I received a summons. When I arrived at the dairyman's cottage, Elizabeth's eyes were closed and she did not perceive my presence. But she did respond to one thing. I would like to read to her. Oh, she'd enjoy that. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory, victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ.
With those words, Elizabeth's eyes opened and a ray of divine light beamed on her countenance. As soon as her last word was finished, she relapsed again, taking no further notice of anyone present. A short struggling for breath took place, and when she regained it, I spoke again. My dear friend, do you feel supported? The Lord deals very gently with me. His promises are precious to you. They are. Are you in pain? So little. I almost forget it. How good the Lord is. How unworthy I am. You are going to see him as he is. I think. I hope. I believe that I am. What a mercy to have a child so near heaven as yours is. What a mercy. If only her poor old mother might follow her there. It is so hard to part. Through grace by faith you will soon meet to part no more. It will be but for a little while. Sir, that, that helps. And it's good to know the Lord's goodness is making me feel more reconciled than I was. Father, mother, he is good to me. Trust him. Praise him evermore. Yes. Sir, I want to thank you for your kindness to me. I want to ask a favor. You buried my sister. Would you do the same for me? It shall be as you wish, if God permits. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have another favor to ask. Anything, Elizabeth? When I am gone, remember my parents. Come and see them. Yes. This is a valley of death, but it's not dark. How so? My Lord is here, and he is my light and my salvation. Elizabeth fell in and out of sleep for ten more hours. Then, at last, sweetly, she fell asleep in the arms of her saviour. I wondered who can conceive the nature of the change the soul must experience at the moment it quits this tabernacle of clay and enters into the presence of God. The delight it must bring Elizabeth lived in poverty, but she was rich in faith. Her heart was set on heavenly riches, and she was clothed in humility and grace. Indeed, we too can be alive in Christ, and on Him, and by Him, and with Him. Listening Friend Rich or poor, shall you and I appear there likewise? Are we clothed with humility and arrayed in the wedding garment of a Redeemer's righteousness? Are we turned from idols to serve the living God? Are we sensible in our own emptiness, flying to a Savior's fullness to obtain grace and strength? Do we live in Him and on Him and by Him and with Him? Is He our all in all? Are we lost and found, dead and alive again? Friend, the dairyman's daughter was a poor girl and a child of a poor man. Do you resemble her? Do you resemble her as she resembled Christ? Are you made rich by faith? Have you a crown laid up for you? Is your heart set upon heavenly riches? If not, go back and listen to this true story once more and then pray earnestly for that precious faith. If, through grace, you love and serve the Redeemer that saved the dairyman's daughter, grace, peace, and mercy be with you. Press forward in duty and wait upon the Lord, possessing your soul in holy patience. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, your Redeemer, the Book of Remembrance is not yet closed. Your name can still be written in it. If you long to experience the joy and peace that filled the dairyman's daughter, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Pacific Garden Mission desires to meet the physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional needs of each individual. If you are homeless and need help getting back on your feet, call us or come to Pacific Garden Mission.
1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois 60607 or call 312-492-9410. For unshackled related items, our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. Did you know we've created even more quality Christian content for you, our listener? It's true. We're bringing to life powerful gospel truths in a series called History's Greatest Sermons. This program features the very words of Billy Sunday, Charles Spurgeon, Dwight L. Moody, and many more, all dramatized and delivered by our very own unshackled actors. If you'd like to hear this program in your area, we encourage you to reach out to your station manager and ask them to bring you History's Greatest Sermons. This is program number 3840, heard in the true story of the Dairyman's Daughter were David Zarbach, Brad Armacost, Cheryl Lynn Galimo, and Linda Kimbrough. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Reagan Smith. Audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Kylie Hammond. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today or reach out to us on social media. Connecting with you means a great deal to us. You can find us on Facebook, X, Instagram, and YouTube at Unshackled PGM. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you.